introduce the MP for Derby North, Chris Williamson. Thanks very much indeed, uh, Chris. Uh, friends, comrades, brothers and sisters, I can't tell you what a privilege it is to be here today addressing the Brigida Guards of the Labour Movement. And what happened here 34 years ago is nothing short of a national scandal and a scandal that must be righted. You know, the miners' strike was a defining moment for the Labour movement in this country and we know that the Tories were determined to exact revenge on the National Union of Mine Workers after they defeated the Tories in 1972 and then effectively threw them out of office in 1974 and they weren't prepared to allow the miners to have that power in the future. But it's obvious that it was revenge against the miners and the mining communities because coal still did have a future, still could have a future. And I was looking at the figures for the amount of coal imports that this country has taken in since the end of the miners' strike, and it's a staggering 846 million tonnes, nearly a billion tonnes of coal brought in from overseas. And of course, Arthur was well ahead of his time when he was talking right back in those days, 34 years ago, about the need for clean coal technology. And of course, there could be a future for the coal mining industry going forward, but the Tories were determined to put pay to that, to put pay to the mining communities that they wanted to destroy. And not only did they want to destroy those mining communities, they wanted to kick the miners when they were down by ripping off the mine workers' pension scheme, and that's another scandal that a future Labour government will address. But you know, the Tories thought they'd won they thought they defeated the miners. But as Tony Benn once said, there are no final victories just as there are no final defeats. There's just the same battle to be fought over and over again. So toughen up, bloody toughen up. And you, this campaign, have demonstrated that you have toughened up and you're not prepared to lie down and take this injustice. But how times have changed. We now have a socialist leader of the Labour Party Yay! and a party that's committed to socialism. How different, how different to the day when we had Neil Kinnock as the leader of the Labour Party. Kinnock who refused to stand on a picket line whilst Jeremy was standing shoulder to shoulder with the miners right from the start of the miners' strike throughout the dispute and has continued to show his solidarity. And we will therefore get truth and we will therefore get justice. Yes, the Tories have refused an inquiry and we need to continue to put pressure on them to give that inquiry. But if they refuse to do so, our manifesto made it very clear that the next Labour government will ensure that inquiry takes place. And on page 80 of that manifesto, which I have here today, it says this in black and white, that Labour will hold public inquiries into historic injustices. We will open inquiries into Orgreave and blacklisting will release papers relating to the Shrewsbury 24 trials and the 37 Camel Laird shipyard workers. That's our commitment to the Labour Party, to the Labour movement. And it shows what a difference we now have with having a genuine socialist as a leader of our party. And Jeremy can't be here today. He's attending that Labour Live 
event in London, but he was desperate for me to read out this message to you today. And he says, I'm sorry, I can't be there in person, but I stand in solidarity with all of you attending the rally today, which marks the 34th anniversary of Orgreave. I wish to thank everyone involved in the Orgreave Truth and Justice campaign for their unfaltering commitment and passionate dedication to this cause. It's shameful, however, that despite these valiant efforts, and after so much time has passed, we're still waiting for truth and justice to be delivered. It took a long and bitter battle to achieve justice for those 96 individuals who were unlawfully killed in the Hillsborough disaster. Those campaigners were also fighting against obstruction, corruption and collusion from within the very institutions responsible for enforcing the law, keeping the peace and upholding our civil rights and freedoms. We know that on that fateful day of the 18th of June 1994, the police did the very opposite. They broke the law. They committed violent and vicious acts of brutality. They made false arrests and then tried to cover it up. Their aim was to break the spirit of those miners and force their surrender. The rally today shows that the fighting spirit and unity of that working class community survives and does so with the support of many others. Stay strong, keep fighting back, and united we will win through solidarity. Jeremy Corbyn, ladies and gentlemen, comrades, friends, brothers and sisters. And I just want to conclude with a line from Percy Shelley's poem, The Mask of Anarchy. Anarchy. And I know Matt, the fantastic poet, where is he, who spoke earlier, made reference to that. But I think it's particularly apposite to this struggle. And you'll remember probably the final verse which says, Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shake your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep have fallen on you. Ye are many. They are few. Change is coming, comrades. Solidarity and victory for the miners.